Howdy, I'm William F. Cody, better known to you, if at all, as Buffalo Bill. I am sorry that I cannot be with you visually in this introduction. However, I will be with you in future episodes in this series. I lived from February 26, 1846 to January 10, 1917. During that period, America was expanding west, fulfilling manifest destiny, growing greatly economically and in population. In my life, I experienced and participated in the movement west by settlers, the building of the Cross-Continental Railroad, the Civil War, Indian Wars, and the Industrial Revolution. But more than that, it was a time of searching by Americans and the newly arrived for and creating a national identity heavily associated with the frontier, the near extinction of the buffalo, and along with the loss of a way of life for the Indians of the plain. That change did not go peacefully, nor was there peace among the settlers, gold seekers, cowboys, north and south, <laughs> turbulence everywhere. People in the east, where the bulk of American population resided, wanted to experience what it was like on the frontier. Later, when the West had been settled there, was nostalgia for the disappearing frontier. At first, it was through literature and its cheapest and most imaginative way, through dime novels, which heavily featured me, hugely popular, then on stage, on which I performed, but that wasn't enough. They wanted something they could actually not just view, but physically experience. They wanted larger than life heroes and villains. I and others provided that through Wild West shows. These extravaganzas, spectacles, gave them the sights the characters and acted out scenes from the untamed frontier. Conflict between Indians, settlers, cowboys, and cavalry with horses, buffaloes, stagecoaches, shooting exhibitions, and so much more. Of course, when it comes to battles, Indians were the aggressors and losers, with the exception being Little Bighorn, where Custard's last stand was fought. But even that was followed by reenactment of my role in getting the first scalp for Custer, Just Revenge. More on that later. It was that vision of the West as a theatrical or circus spectacle that was accepted and promoted for decades in media and public perception of the Wild West for the better part of the 20th century. And that vision was predominant not just in America. Europeans accepted and even embraced it as well. Under my leadership, my show, and my presence, I helped create that vision. It made millions for the Wild Wild West shows. Unfortunately for me, I gave away or lost my millions. But as a man of the West, I always knew and re treated to my roots, the plains. That was where my soul found peace. And by the way, I made a foray into movies, something totally new, through a film, Indian Wars, which unfortunately had become a lost movie. In other words, no copy. Outside of a few minutes of Indian Wars, it's known to exist. I was just two years away from my death when I starred in that movie, in my late 60s. I still had what it took to convincingly portray being a scout. It premiered in only two cities, then canned, because politicians and bureaucrats felt it presented too favorable a view of the Indians. Yes, it was a very difficult time for the Native Americans. I also want you to know I have supporters and detractors in biographical and other media discussions. 
And I have to admit, despite, or perhaps because of, the fame I attained, I was a flawed human by many standards, be it alcohol or infidelity, and according to some, I exploited Native Americans. Even that I was insane. There were volumes written about me. I have a center celebrating my life and times and dedicated in my name in Cody, Wyoming. The exception, very little and nothing in specific about my leadership principles. This is what I want to share with you who are aspiring to leadership. We'll start with my early life. My foundation was built on my experiences in my youth in the plains with my family. I was born in Iowa, moved to Kansas, and from there worked, thrived, and fought in other Midwestern states, learning and doing everything necessary to survive and flourish despite the hardships of losing a father, becoming a provider for my mom and five sisters at age 11, learning the skills be it use of weapon, horsemanship, interacting with hostiles, and not just Indians, but also fellow whites, be it in the border wars in Kansas, and then the Civil War. The friends and contacts I made, like Wild Bill Hecock, and the Army while serving as a scout or spy, essential to my success and the critical principles I've learned through scouting. That is, how to be exceptional in that line of work and consequently the role that scouting had in acquiring critical leadership principles I carried forth into my adult life as a showman. Through scouting, I set the table for others to do their job, accomplish their objectives, be they settlers, cavalry, or later the people that were my partners and employees in the decades of my Wild West show, and of course, the public itself. I learned how to make money. However, I was not, when it was all said and done, a successful investor, so as to have my fortune last through the end of my life. When I died, my family wondered how they would pay for my funeral. So in the video we are going to produce, I will focus on my life and lessons learned. I will share my leadership principles that allowed me to be spectacularly transitioned from being successful on horseback on the plains to being on horseback in center stage of my Wild West show and becoming an international celebrity. You will hear and see the good, the bad, and the ugly. So many of you look to celebrities as role models. Well, I was one of the very first American celebrities. However, so much more for you to consider. I led others to achieve their objectives. I made drastic transition. I never forgot my roots. And because my life, the lessons it taught me, and the way I apply them are principles you can emulate. That is, to develop a passion so deep that it moves you to action to achieve or surpass my accomplishments, be it whatever role you aspire to in leadership. So for now, as they say in Hawaii, where the series is produced, aloha. <laughs>